Uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the second session of Network Layer. In the last session, we discussed the functions and the services of Network Layer. In this session, we will understand the importance of router. Right. Coming to the introduction of a router, router is a networking device that forwards data packets between computer net network. A router has a number of interfaces by which it can connect to a number of host system. So router is used to uh, connect to the different networks. A router receives and sends data on computer networks. Router are sometimes confused with network hubs, modems or network switches. However, routers can combine the function of these components and connect with these devices to improve the internet access or help create business network. So, a router is used to connect two or more networks having different network addresses. So, router is a networking device that forwards data packets between computer network. So, router is used to connect two or more networks having different network addresses. Network routers are used to divide a big network into multiple small networks. Network routers forward and receive data from one network to another network. Router segments large networks into logical segments called subnets. If the network is too big, it is difficult for the administrator to manage. So uh, the large network is divided into different subnetworks and each subnet will have its own IP address. Right. So router is used to connect two or more networks having different network addresses and uh, routers are used to divide a big network into multiple small networks and uh, uh, routers receive and send data on computer network. And uh, coming to the functions of a router, the router basically performs two major functions. Those are forwarding and routing, right? Router receives the packet from the input ports, check header, performs some basic functions like checking checksum, which is used to detect error, and then looks up to the routing table to find the appropriate output port to dump the packet onto and forwards the packet onto that output port. Right. This is the uh, major function of uh, uh, root router that is forwarding. Coming to the routing, routing is the process by which the router checks what is the best path for the packet to reach the destination. It maintains a routing table which is made using different algorithms by router only. In router, a routing table will be there and it also maintains the routing algorithm which is used to find the shortest path from source to destination. And there are different types of routing like dynamic routing and static routing. And a, a router is a process of selecting the path along which the data can be transferred from source to the destination. To send the packet from source to destination, we use uh, routing. And routing is performed by a special device known as a router. So uh, a router maintains a uh, routing table and it also has uh, software uh, that is uh, uh, algorithm which is used to find the shortest path from source to destination. And a router works at the network layer in the OSI model and internet layer in TCP IP model. In OSI model, there are seven layers and in TCP IP model, there are four layers. In uh, uh, OSI model, the router works at the network layer 
and in TCP IP model, the router that is uh, routing uh, happens in the internet layer, right? In the TCP IP model, there are four layers. Those are network interface layer, internet layer, transport layer, and application layer, right? In OSI model, uh, there are seven layers. Uh, you all know uh, those are uh, physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and application layer. So router is a networking device that forwards the packet based on the information available in the packet header and forwarding table. So router is a networking device uh, that forwards the packet mm -hmm. based on the information available in the packet header and the forwarding table. So router receives and sends data on computer network and uh, router is used to connect two or more uh, networks having different network addresses. If you want to send a packet from one network to another network, uh, routing uh, plays very important role and it is very essential to send the data from uh, one network to another network or if the network is a large uh, you can divide the network into different subnets and uh, you can uh, communicate uh, between two subnets using router. The routing algorithms are used for routing the packets. The routing algorithm is nothing but a software responsible for deciding the optimal path through which the packet can be transmitted. So routing algorithm is very much essential and required to find the shortest path from source to destination. And routing protocol uses the metric to determine the best path for the packet delivery. The metric is the standard of measurement such as hop count, bandwidth, delay, current load on the path. Used by routing algorithm to determine the optimal path to the destination. Right. Uh, there are several metrics to find the shortest path from source to destination and those are op count, bandwidth, delay, current load, etc. And uh, routing algorithm consider these metrics to find the shortest path from source to destination. Right. The routing algorithm uses the metric to determine the best path for the packet to deliver from source to destination right the routing algorithms are used for routing the packets and for routing uh, you have to find the shortest path to find the shortest path you have to run the algorithm algorithm determines the shortest path by considering the matrix that is half count bandwidth delay current load etc next is routing matrix and cost what is this routing matrix and cost these are used for determining the best route which is used to find the best route from source to destination the factor used by the protocol to determine the shortest path are hop count delay bandwidth load and reliability so the most common metric values are uh, hop count uh, that is it is used to define a metric that specifies the number of passes through internetworking devices such as router. A packet must travel in a route to move from source to destination. So, op count is a very important metric or factor to identify the shortest path from source to destination. That is, it is defined as a metric that specifies the number of passes through internetworking devices such as router see uh, to move from one network to another network there will be several uh, routers in between the networks so you have to pass those routers to reach the destination and if you reach one uh, router then op count is reduced by mm -hmm. one if you route, if you uh, move to the another router again the op count is reduced uh, by one so op count is defined as the metric that specifies the number of passes through internetworking devices so a network uh, 
uh, router is used to connect two or more networks having different network addresses. In between two networks, there will be several routers and uh, the packet has to move from one router to another router. If, by uh, moving from one router to another router, the packet uh, will reach the destination. When uh, it uh, passes from one router to another router, the hop count is reduced by one. Next, delay. It is a time taken by the router to process, queue, and transmit a datagram to an interface. A delay uh, means a latency. It is a time taken by the router to process. So uh, the processor of the system should be strong enough to uh, read the information present in the uh, segment. That is, uh, and uh, uh, it has to process the packet uh, to find the control information uh, to find the next uh, route uh, to reach the destination this is right and it is a time taken by the router to process and uh, transmit a datagram to an interface and uh, uh, delay means if the link is busy it has to wait in the queue the packet has to wait in a queue so this is also considered as uh, delay and uh, coming to the bandwidth, it is the capacity of the link and it is known as the bandwidth of the link. The bandwidth is measured in terms of bits per second. Every link has bandwidth. If uh, the bandwidth is uh, more, then you can uh, send uh, more bits per second. If uh, bandwidth is less, then uh, the transmission uh, uh, will come down. The transmission rate also comes down. And uh, coming to the load, load refers to the degree to which the network resource, such as a router or network uh, or network link, uh, right, is busy. That is, network resources is nothing but a router, a hub, switch. Uh, these are, are uh, devices considered as a network resources, and we have to utilize the network resources efficiently to. Uh, manage the network to avoid congestion, to avoid uh, traffic, right? A load can be calculated in a variety of ways such as CPU utilization, CPU utilization and uh, packet uh, processes per second. If the uh, traffic increases, then the load also increases. The load value changes with respect to the change in the traffic. So load is one of the metric used to find the shortest path. If the link is busy, then you have to find the alternate uh, link to reach the destination. So a load can be calculated in a variety of ways. Uh, those are uh, CPU utilization, uh, packet processes per second. Uh, these are some of the uh, things you have to consider while uh, choosing the best path uh, from source to destination. And coming to the reliability, reliability is a metric factor. It depends on the network link and its value is measured dynamically. So reliability plays very important role. Uh, while sending the packet from source to destination, the packet uh, should reach the destination and delivery guarantee should be there. That is, some networks go down more often than others. After network failure, some network links repair more easily than other network links so any reliability factor can be considered for the assignment of reliability ratings which are generally numeric values assigned by the network administrator so coming to the reliability it is a metric factor it depends on network links and its value is measured dynamically reliability uh, that is if the link is busy uh, then uh, delay takes place and there is no guarantee that uh, a packet will reach the destination. In that case, we have to find the alternate path. So some networks go down more often than others. In that case, self-prepare should be there. And uh, uh, this is managed by the network administrator. And uh, some network uh, 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 repair more easily than other when network failure takes place. So reliability factor is very much important. That is, uh, for every message you should send some acknowledgement or 
uh, if there is any uh, congestion in the network, if there is any package drop in the network, feedback facility should be there. Like this, there are several uh, reliability factors you can uh, implement to uh, find the shortest path and to uh, provide a reliable uh, data transmission. Coming to the router architecture, what's inside a router? The router consists of input port, switching fabric, output port, and routing processor. So uh, these are some of the components of a router. It consists of input port, switching fabric, output port, and routing processor. We will see what is input port, switching fabric, output port, and routing processor. See, coming to the input ports. See, input port. The input port performs several functions. It performs the physical layer functionality, data link layer functionality. It also performs lookup and forwarding functions so that a datagram forwarded into a switching fabric of the router emerges at the appropriate output port. This is the function of input port and in the input port there are three components that is line termination, uh, uh, that is decapsulation and uh, lookup forwarding table. It also maintains queue, right? So the uh, input port performs uh, physical layer functionality that is line termination, data link layer functionality that is uh, decapsulation and it also performs lookup and forwarding function so that a datagram forwarded into the switching fabric of the router emerges at the appropriate output port. See, what is the switching fabric? Now, switching the fabric, that is the switching fabric connects the router's input port to its output port. So, this switching fabric is completely contained within the router, inside the router. So it connects the input port to the output port. And what is output port? An output port stores the datagram that have been forwarded to it through the switching fabric and then transmits the datagram mm -hmm. on the outside link. So the output port thus performs the reverse operation of input port. That is the output port performs the reverse data link and physical layer functionality as uh, the input port. And uh, coming to the routing of processor, the routing processor executes the routing protocol, maintains the routing table, and performs network management functions within the router. These are uh, some of the components of uh, uh, router. And uh, coming to the uh, switching fabric in detail, the, this is considered as the heart of the router. This uh, switching fabric is uh, the heart of the root router and it connects the input port with the output port. In um, uh, Between input port and output port, there is switching fabric and it is considered as the heart of the router. It connects input port uh, with the output port. It is a kind of network inside a networking device and the switching fabric can be implemented in a number of ways. Some of the prominent ones are switching via memory, switching via bus, switching via interconnection network. Let us see what is switching via memory, switching via bus and switching via interconnected networks. Coming to the switching via memory, in this we have processor which copies the packet from input port and sends it to the appropriate output port. It works as a traditional CPU with input and output ports acting as input and output device. So here memory will be there in the diagram, you can see uh, the memory and uh, here a queue is there, uh, right? When a, a processor copies the packet, in this we have a processor which copies the packet from input port to the output port. 
input port and sends it to the appropriate output port right this is uh, switching via memory and it works as a traditional cpu with input and output ports acting as input and output devices switching via bus in this implementation we have a bus which connects all the input ports to all the output ports all the input ports to all the output ports on a receiving on receiving a packet and uh, determining which output port it must be delivered to the input port puts a particular token on the packet and uh, transfers it to the bus all the output ports are able to see the packet but it will be delivered to the output port whose token has been put in the token is then scrapped off by that output port and the packet is forwarded this is how the switching takes place via bus and uh, coming to the switching via interconnection network this is more sophisticated network here instead of a single bus we use 2n bus to connect n input ports to n output ports in the diagram we can uh, see there are n input ports and n output ports then in the next session we will understand uh, IPv4 and IPv6.